If you've ever been frustrated when troubleshooting IAM policies, then you need to know about this tool, the IAM Policy Simulator. This is something that I've been using for quite a few years now, and it's a very, very useful tool to help troubleshoot issues with IAM, especially when you're facing access denied errors and you just can't figure out why you don't have access to a particular resource or service. So the great thing about this tool is the fact that it doesn't start you off with a clean slate. Over on the left hand side here, we have access to the users, groups and roles that currently exist in the AWS account that you're currently logged in as. So you can come here and just tinker with some of the different entities that you have created in the IAM section of your account. And on the right hand side here in the policy simulator section, this is where we interact with many of the other AWS services to simulate different actions for certain APIs. So for example, if I wanted to test if a user has a certain AWS Amplify permission, I would click the AWS Amplify service, select the actions that I want to test it against, and then run the simulation. So that's the idea of this service. Let's see this a little bit in action. So I have an IAM user here called Daniel. And if I click on Daniel, right away I can see some specifics about the IAM policies that are currently configured against this user. We can see we have one IAM policy called Amazon S3 Full Access. And if we click on it, we can see the details of the policy. So it's effect allow, it's all the S3 actions on any resource. If we click on back, we can also see we have another policy, the student policy that's attached to us. In this case, this student policy is denying, so the effect is deny the action to create a bucket on any AWS resource. So the expectation is, and if you recall how IAM works, deny trumps allows. So if you have a deny and you have an allow, the deny will win. So we can test this out really quick to see what the behavior is when we try to call that S3 create bucket API as if we were this user, Daniel, trying to access this API either through the AWS console or programmatically using my AWS credentials. So let's see this a little bit in action here. If we go to the top now and we just change this, we're gonna to go to S3. And for the actions that we're gonna test against, we're gonna do create bucket here. And let's just close that. Uh, you can see here, if we expand the S3 section, you can also specify if you want to test this simulation against a specific bucket. Uh, but if you have the wild card here, then it's gonna to apply to all. And then what we can do now is just very simply run the simulation. So you can see the result here is that we have a deny, which is as you would expect because the student policy had that deny for create bucket. Now the cool part about this tool is that if you click on this and then you go to show statement, it shows you very explicitly where the denial is coming from. So there's no longer any guessing as to why you're getting a specific denial um, as you're trying to troubleshoot an issue. It's very clearly laid out to you using this tool. And so if you go back now, let's try this out with a couple other permissions where we would expect us to have access to. So for example, if I go back to the top here and let's say we're trying to access delete object and get object over here. Now our expectation should be that these APIs, since we have S3 full access should work correctly. We can very easily run that simulation. We can see that it is allowed for the delete object and allowed for the get object and still denied for the create bucket. Very neat as well as if you click on the allow ones, you can see where you are getting the allow permission, which is that Amazon S3 full access policy attached to this user group. So that's when you have explicit permission specified for a service, but what if we're trying to access a service where we don't have any permissions associated with our user? So let's try a service like DynamoDB, and I'm just going to change the selection now to DynamoDB, and let's reset the results here, or clear the results, and for select actions, let's just do select all actually to see what we have permission to as the user Daniel. So we can run the simulation now and as you would expect, we get denied for everything. And it very cleverly detects that this is an implicit denial, which for those of you that aren't familiar with IAM, uh, IAM follows the rules. That is, if you are not given the explicit permission to perform an action, then you are automatically denied the permission to do so. So in other words, you need to be given the permission in order to do something. Uh, just a roundabout way of explaining it. 
Um, so you can see like there's denials coming for all these other APIs that are uh, as expected in this case. Now you can also tinker with, uh, right now we have existing policy selected, but you can tinker with new policies that you create right here and right now in the policy sandbox. And these are just temporary IAM policies and you can you know create your own here if you want like a specific action. Um, but we're not gonna do that in this demo, but it's neat that you can create these temporary policies just to experiment with with, uh, for kind of a throwaway purpose. If you enjoyed this video, check out my overview on IAM and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.